Dafyomi Tractate Bhavakama, page 72a at the top of the page with the words Dila Achli Bisara Ditorum is because I had not eaten ox meat. In other words, I was fasting yesterday and I was unable to concentrate properly. Oh, so um, I think it was Rav Nachman. He changed his opinion. I think that's what it was. Rav responded to him. But if the Torah requires even a partial payment of the fourfold or fivefold payment, what is different in the first clause in which the son must pay and what is different in the latter clause where he is exempt? Rav Nachman said to him in the first clause, where the father's animal is stolen and slaughtered in his lifetime, I read about this case, the verse, if a man steal an ox or a sheep and slaughter it, Exodus 21.37, which indicates that the thief slaughtered the ox or the sheep entirely in a prohibited manner. In the latter clause, where, where the animal was slaughtered after the father's death, I do not read about this case, the verse, and slaughter it, which describes a slaughter that was performed entirely in a prohibited manner because the animal already partially belonged to him and his own portion of the ox was slaughtered in a permitted manner. The Mishnah teaches the thief who slaughters the animal, but it was found to be a trefa, and likewise the thief who slaughters a non-sacred animal in the temple courtyard pays the fourfold or fivefold payment. Rav Havivi of Mechoza, Mechozna'a, Rav Havivi Mechozna or Mechoza. Rav Havivi of Mechoza says Ravashi conclude from the Mishnah the act of slaughtering is considered to have been performed only at the end of the slaughtering process. Rav Chavivi of Mechoza explains as if you say the act of slaughtering lasts from beginning to end, in other words, the halachic ramifications of slaughtering are in effect throughout the process one could raise a question with regard to the case of one who slaughters a non sacred animal in the temple courtyard. Once he slaughtered the animal a bit, at the very start of the act of slaughter, he has prohibited the animal with regard to deriving benefit as a non sacred animal slaughtered in the temple courtyard. When he slaughters the other part, it is already prohibited with regard to deriving benefit, which means that it is not an animal that belongs to its owner that he slaughters. Since deriving benefit from the animal is prohibited, it has no value. Therefore, there is no ownership. Rav Huna, son of Rav, said to Rav Chavivi in response, It is possible to explain the Mishnah, even if one maintains that the Allah ramifications of slaughtering are in effect throughout the slaughter. As when does the thief become obligated to pay the fourfold or fivefold payment? It is when he performs that first bit of slaughter in the beginning, before the animal becomes forbidden. Rav Ashi said to Rav Huna, Do not dismiss Rav Chavivi's objection with this explanation. The verse, If a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it, Exodus 21.37 indicates, that to impose liability to pay the fourfold or fivefold payment, we require that the thief slaughter it completely, and after having slaughtered it just a bit, there is no complete slaughter yet. Rafuna is said to have Ashi. But if you are correct, the mission is difficult according to the one who maintains that the halakhic ramifications of slaughtering are in effect throughout the slaughter. Rav Ashi said to Rav Huna, This is what Rav Gamda said in the name of Rava. Concerning this question, the mission is discussing a case where the thief slaughtered, in other words, severed part of the two organs that must be severed in ritual slaughter, that is, the trachea and the esophagus, outside the temple, and finished the slaughtering them inside the temple. Therefore, the animal became prohibited with regard to driving benefit only at the final stage of slaughter, concomitant with liability to pay the fourfold or fivefold payment. There are those who teach that the preceding exchange took place with regard to the following dispute. Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish 
says in the name of Rabbi Levi the Elder. The act of slaughtering is considered to have been performed only at the end of the slaughtering process. Rabbi Yochanan says, the act of slaughtering lasts from the beginning to end. Rabbi Chaviv Yomahosa said to Ravashi, shall we say that Rabbi Yochanan holds that the prohibition against driving benefit from non sacred animals that were slaughtered in the temple courtyard is not by Torah law?